Dr. Simeon Hine here, and I just want to show you this really cool little Martin Backpacker guitar. You know, it's a guitar that I use to get around in places where I can't bring a big guitar, maybe from traveling or something, or taking it out to the beach or the mountains. And what I really like about this little guitar, and about acoustic guitars in general, is they just always work. You know, you don't need to plug anything in, you don't need an operating system, you know, they don't need to be booted up. They don't need batteries, you know what I'm talking about. They just work every time. And the reason they work is they're built on principles of natural resonance. It's just built into nature. And, you know, there's a lot of things like that besides musical instruments, because we're built on resonance too. And just like a musical instrument, our resonance uh, always works. It's just built into us. And so, this is something that really we should be looking at more closely. And the amazing thing about it is, it's not only things like music that have natural built-in resonance. All of us, all of us with physical bodies or non-physical bodies, as it may be, we all have this built-in resonance, this connection to the universe through vibration, sound, and frequency. And just like a guitar, when you turn it on, it's just always there. Your resonance is always there. It just works. And that's the amazing thing about all these different resonant activities that we've been talking about over the past couple of years. Remote viewing, crop circles, um, UFOs, extraterrestrials, uh, communications with spirits, things like this. They all have to do with the property of resonance, the ability of energy and information to move spontaneously from one area in the universe in the holographic field to another area uh, without any time delay, without any lag. It, the information just comes through because resonance is kind of the natural state of the universe. And just like we talked about in the previous video, part two, we were talking about why resonance works. It's because it's built into you. Today, I want to talk a little bit about how it works because this is really the interesting thing. What do we really need to access our own resonance? Because I can tell you right now, some of the benefits of accessing your own internal resonance is just a spontaneous and natural feeling of abundance because you're connected to your natural self, to your energy, to your source of creativity. And when you're connected in that way, information and, and energy just naturally flow through you and you just have this kind of natural inherent abundance. So the question today is how do we connect to that resonance? Well, here's how it really works. We're connected to that resonance all the time. And the only reason we don't experience it more directly is simply because we've had this conditioning from the uh, institutions and organizations and, and school systems and so forth that have you know, done their best to try to help us throughout our lives, but they've also limited us to working with our left brain, to the logical, analytical, rational, sort of systematic sort of thinking that we're all used to. and the resonant processes that I'm familiar with work through our own subconscious mind. In other words, they're always there, but they're very quiet voices. And this is the important point. The resonant signals, compared to the noisy talking monkey mind, are very quiet, they're very subtle, and they're very fleeting. They're transient. They come in and then they leave. And it's like that quiet little voice that you know is sometimes talking to you kind of at the back of your head when you're making a decision, an important decision about something, and it's saying, no, you really should be doing this. You know what I'm talking about. It's a very fleeting and very quiet signal, and you have to listen very hard to hear it. So how does the resonant viewing process work? What really makes it work? What makes it work is the fact that when we quiet our minds down, these resonant signals are there all the time. They have been all the time. They've been with us all the time. But because the, the voice of society is so loud in our minds sometimes, in our own internal dialogue, you know, we can't hear these quiet signals. So the resonant viewing process works uh, by teaching us to quiet our mind through a certain structured protocol that's been tested for a long time. And it shows us that if we quiet our conscious mind down quite a bit, then what, we can, what we're left with is we can hear some of those more resonant, uh, internal, sort of spontaneous sources of information, and they talk to us in a very quiet voice. But what I've found through my experience is they talk, it's very accurate information. So even though the information is very quiet, 
it's also very accurate. And this is one of the big paradoxes of resonant processes. And it's the paradox that really fascinates me the most. And here it is. The quietest voices in your awareness are the most accurate ones. And the loud, kind of domineering, uh, vocal ones that we're so used to uh, are the ones that tend to be less accurate in many circumstances. So it's the most quiet, sort of vague, ambiguous sorts of information that can often be the most accurate. I know it sounds like a contradiction, but it's the truth. And I'm not the only one who's found this. There's a book I recommend you take a look at sometime. It's one of my favorites. It's called Harebrained Tortoise Mind, How Intelligence Increases When You Think Less by Guy Claxton. Uh, he's a, a British uh, sort of psychologist and, and brain uh, consciousness researcher. And what he's found in Harebrained Tortoise Mind is that we often make better decisions when we think less, hence the title of the book, How Intelligence Increases When You Think Less. You know, we've been used to this idea that the more you think about things, the more information you're going to have. But what a lot of studies, carefully controlled uh, scientific studies, have shown is you actually make better decisions in many circumstances when you think about the decisions less. For example, when you're buying something, an automobile or a house, and it's just very complicated. You can't understand all the processes going on in the automobile. There's too many things to look at in the house. You can basically just get a generic feel for the situation. And what Claxton uh, shows us through some of these studies is that actually you're happier with your decisions in the long run if you don't think about them so much and go with that kind of gut intuitive feeling. And the reason for it is is because the subconscious mind actually deals much better with those sort of situations than the conscious mind. Why? Because it's processing lots of information all the time, but it's not telling you that it's doing it in an obvious way. It just shows you the end result, which is a certain feeling. And so resonant processes teach you to pay attention to these feelings because they're not just sort of uh, uh, baseless sort of imaginary um, uh, notions and, and, and feelings, they're actually based on a whole computational process that your subconscious mind is going through that you're not aware of. That's what we call the subconscious mind. And when it reaches a feeling about a certain situation, person, place, something like that, it's going to give you a kind of an outcome just in a generic sort of feeling. And what uh, Claxton shows us is basically that these processes can be very accurate and you can, hey, Surprise, surprise, trust your intuition. So what we know from all of this research is that the subconscious and conscious minds work in very different ways. I'm not saying that the conscious mind in some circumstances doesn't do a very good job when you have a lot of information, it's quantified, it's rational, you can kind of, it's upfront, it's very objective and so forth. But in that situation, the conscious mind can, can make good decisions. But there are many situations, especially nowadays, where we're dealing with very ambiguous situations where we don't know exactly what's going on. However, the subconscious mind is designed exactly to deal with this through millions of years of, of evolution. We've been designed to basically learn how to deal, you know, uh, with ambiguous situations. I mean, just think how we were a couple, milli you know, uh, 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 years ago. You know, you're, we're in the forest, on the savanna, and there's different predators and so forth, and you don't know exactly what's going on. You need your subconscious mind to kind of make a decision whether to be in a certain area, whether to leave, and so forth. So the subconscious mind has evolved through you know, hundreds of thousands of millions of years of evolution to kind of help us uh, reach decisions very quickly um, in situations where we don't have a, a complete amount of information. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to look at some examples of actual resonant viewing sessions and a little more about the processes behind why it works. So I know you're going to enjoy it, and uh, we'll just see you in the next video. Take care.